Hoyerism, how you going? Capcom released another update for Dragon's Dogma 2. This is patch number 7 and it's the biggest patch we've ever seen so far. It's pretty hefty. It introduces quality of life features, optimization and performance fixes. Some unobtainable items are no longer missing. You can get them in the game. So in this quick overview video, I'll go through each and every change. I'll show you what's been changed. And I'd also like to talk about the Dragon's Dogma 2 survey Capcom posted the other day. I think it's very important and I'd like to mention it towards the end of the video. Anyways, I'm super excited. Let's go and have a look. All right, so here we go. Patch number seven from the 27th of June. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm super happy to see pictures with examples here. I ironically think it's pretty cool. And thank you very much for showing this patch and us some love. Anyways, let's start with adjustments and additions to the storage. First of all, there's a function now to sell items from the storage menu. Right now you can come up to any innkeeper and there will be an option to sell items from the storage. I'm not sure about the prices because as far as I know, they can differ from vendor to vendor. So I didn't have enough time to check it out to test it but yeah it's possible now to sell items from the storage by talking to any innkeeper. Next up we have a function to equip armor from the storage menu. Just like with the previous one, you can now come up to, as you can see here on this screenshot, you can come up to Shakir, for example, in Vernworth, and there will be an option to equip from storage. It's a very handy little quality of life feature, and it's very much appreciated. Next up, a function to equip armor from the storage when changing vocation in a vocation guild. Do you remember how it was back then? You come up to a vocation guild master, then change your vocation from fighter to archer, and then just end up standing there barefoot and <laughs> naked like a dummy. Not anymore. So now you can access your storage from the vocation guild master as well and you know change your gear. Next up the maximum number of items of one kind that can be put in storage are increased from 99 to 999. So now as you can see the limit of each individual item is 999 which is fantastic and finally this 3000 items storage limit is justified. And the last one in regards to the storage adjusting so that when an item is put in the storage beyond the maximum limit, the maximum number of items are automatically put in storage. So all of these are pretty cool, though I still think there's room for improvement. For example, deposit, withdraw and combine tabs could be combined together. You could just switch between them with L2, R2 or something. I don't know. Anyways, that's it for the storage quality of life features. So now let's move on to photo mode changes. Adding the option to turn the Arisen's visibility on or off in photo mode. I think it's pretty good. It's not ideal, but it's a start. Me personally, I'd like to be able to hide every pawn separately, but it's a good start and a very welcome change. All right, so now let's move on to other changes. This one, adjusting so that it's easier to find ox carts in the field. I'm not quite sure what they mean by that. Originally, I thought that they will be displayed on your map now, but they're not displayed on your map. So maybe now ox carts will spawn next to you more often. I'm not sure, it needs to be further tested. And next up, fixed issue where Venator's leggings, ring of predominance and comforting neck wrap were unobtainable. They are obtainable now. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the ring, but Venator leggings can be purchased from Beatrice in Volcanic Island Armory. It's 34,200 gold and comforting neck wrap can be purchased from Chandler in Harv Village and it's 2,250 gold. I'm extremely happy about that and I think comforting neck wrap is my next favorite cape ever. Okay, what do we have next? Fixed issues that caused players to be able to enter areas they should not be able to. I'm not 100% sure what they mean by that, but when checking out all the changes, I tried to get into ancestral chamber and I hit an invisible wall so maybe that's what they mean maybe there are invisible walls now in Dragon's Dogma 2 I don't know I just don't know if that particular invisible wall was there earlier before the patch. The next one, fixed issue with purchase pricing for precious stones in Vermont being incorrect at some shops. I'm not quite sure I never purchased stones in Vermont or anywhere else, I just find them. But here you go, it's fixed now. <laughs> fixed issue where the Oracle's guidance would not account for a necessary character being dead. Never happened to me, but it's good it's fixed. Fixed issue where some gathering points would not regenerate until the next playthrough. This one also never happened to me, but maybe I just did notice. If that ever happened to you, you let me and everyone else know in the comments. Fixed issue where incorrect NPC 
portraits were displayed. Again, I've never seen that. Fixed issues around opening the door in the ancestral chamber. So in my current playthrough, it's still barred. I went there and the only way for me to open it was waiting for skeletons to spawn and just break it for me. I don't know. <laughs> and finally, issues around CPU overload in certain situations. There's a note here. Frame rates in areas with a lot of NPCs, such as town centers, should be improved. In addition, turning the graphics settings to low should further improve frame rates. Players on Steam can achieve the same result from changing their graphics settings. And I'm so extremely happy to say that it's true this time. The game feels much smoother, so here in Vermont I usually get around 25 to 30 FPS. So now it's not ideal, it's not stable 60, but it's somewhere between 45 and 60 with occasional dips, NPCs still pop in front of your face, but it's much better now. In addition, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S users now have a performance mode. An option to switch graphics between high and low has been added, as well as a toggle to turn 120 hertz output on and off if your monitor if your screen supports it of course so again the performance in my case it's not ideal still but it's much better it's much smoother now and what makes me really hopeful and happy is this little line here saying that further frame rate improvements are planned for future updates as well we also have miscellaneous bug fixes i can't not talk about miscellaneous bug fixes but this time i can't really make fun of it because the patch is really good. Maybe I should start a limited merch line, you know, miscellaneous bug fixes t-shirts. <laughs> Anyways, before I let you go, here's the survey I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Here it is. It says, Hoi Arisen, share your feedback in our survey for Dragon's Dogma 2 and receive a digital wallpaper. We look forward to your feedback and opinions. Here's the link. I'll leave it in the description. I think it's very important and it's our chance to give Capcom our feedback in regards to the game. Just note that it needs to be completed before the 30th of June. So we still have still a couple of days. And that's about it for today. You can follow me on Twitter, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it and thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. You know what? I will just download it right now and change my background. Just give me one sec. Done. <laughs> All right.